the Future Combat Systems manned ground vehicles was a family of lighter and more transportable ground vehicles developed by BAE Systems Inc. and General Dynamics as part of the United States Army's Future Combat Systems program. The ground vehicles were to be based on a common track vehicle chassis. The MGV program has been superseded by the ground combat vehicle history. The Department of Defense announced budget cuts in April 2009, which resulted in the cancellation of the FCS manned ground vehicles family. The DOD determined that the proposed FCS vehicle designs would not provide sufficient protection against IEDs. The Army plans to restart from the beginning on manned ground vehicles. The FCS MGVs have been superseded by the BCT ground combat Combat Vehicle Program, which was later cancelled in 2014. Design Most vehicles were protected with hard kill active protection systems capable of defeating most threats. The armor was a unique secret matrix that may be utilized by industry in the BCT Ground Combat Vehicle Program. Variants Initial technology demonstrator vehicle by United Defense yielded both tracked and wheeled prototypes. Only the tracked variant was pursued further. Wheeled FCS Wheeled was an early concept designed to demonstrate hybrid electric drive system and two-man cockpit workstation. A technology demonstrator a vehicle was built by United Defense and was unveiled in 2002. FCSW was designed to deliver a top road speed of 75 miles per hour and a top cross country speed of 40 miles per hour. The vehicle's armor utilized armor similar to the tracked variant but was lighter. The vehicle would have also had some type of active protection system. The arrangement of the turbine and drive motor provided for a two man side by side cockpit and a sizable payload compartment. Tracked Reconnaissance and Surveillance Vehicle The XM1201 Reconnaissance and Surveillance Vehicle featured a suite of advanced sensors to detect, locate, track, classify and automatically identify targets under all climatic conditions, day and night. The suite included a mast-mounted, long-range optoelectronic infrared sensor, an emitter mapping sensor for radio frequency interception and direction finding chemical sensor and a multifunction radio frequency sensor. The RSV also features the onboard capability to conduct automatic target detection aided target recognition and level 1 sensor fusion. To further enhance the scout's capabilities, the RSV is also equipped with unattended ground sensors, a small unmanned ground vehicle with various payloads and two unmanned aerial vehicles. It is armed with a 30mm MK44 auto cannon and a coaxial 7.62mm M240 machine gun. Mounted Combat System The XM1202 Mounted Combat System was a planned U. S. Army tank. It was to be small enough to be able to fit two units inside a C-17 or one inside a smaller C-130 Hercules transport. The mounted combat system was to provide both direct and beyond line-of-sight offensive firepower capability, and allowed for in-depth destruction of point targets up to 8 kilometers away. This required the use of an integrated sensor network to detect enemy forces. The MCS was to have had a crew of two and to be armed with a 120mm main gun, a 50 caliber machine gun, and a 40mm automatic grenade launcher. The MCS was intended to deliver precision fire at a rapid rate in order to destroy multiple targets at standoff ranges quickly, and would complement the other systems in the unit of action. It would be capable of providing direct support to the dismounted infantry in an assault, defeating bunkers, and breaching walls during tactical assaults.
units. It was also intended to be highly mobile, in order to maneuver out of contact and into positions of advantage, given the vehicle's light weight. This is especially important. A common MGV chassis was required to provide full protection from 30mm and 45mm cannon fire in a 60-degree arc opening towards the front of the vehicle. 360 degree protection from small arms fire up to 14.5 mm heavy machine gun and 155 mm artillery shell air bursts was planned. Protection from higher caliber rounds as well as anti tank guided missiles would be provided by an active protection system manufactured by Raytheon, known as Quick Kill. The MCS would consist of the common manned ground vehicle chassis and auto-loading line-of-sight and BLOS capability. Non-line-of-sight cannon The XM1203 non-line-of-sight cannon was a mobile 155mm cannon intended to provide improved responsiveness and lethality to the unit of action commander as part of the U.S. Army's future combat systems project. This self-propelled armored artillery piece provided networked, extended range targeting, and precision attack of point and area targets in support of other combat units with a suite of munitions that includes special purpose capabilities. The non-line-of-sight cannon provided sustained fire for close support and destructive fire for tactical standoff engagement. The NLOS cannon used technology from the cancelled XM-2001 Crusader. NLOSC was a proposed system in development to be part of the FCS environment and funded by the U.S. Congress shortly after cancellation of the XM-2001 Crusader M. 109 replacement. It was an 18-ton class vehicle that would have been a replacement for current vehicle systems in the 40-60 to 60 ton weight class. It would provide a level of air transport ability that current M109 systems cannot at present match. The system's primary purpose was to provide responsive fire in support of the FCS combined arms battalions, and the subordinate units in concert with line of sight, beyond line of sight, non-line of sight, external and joint capabilities. The system as proposed looked to add capabilities that the current M109 systems do not offer. One of the proposed system's advantages was the ability to switch shell types quickly on a one-by-one -one basis allowing an illumination round to be followed by a point detonation round, to be followed by an area effect round. This would have given the system the ability to fire different rounds as required by different fire calls to change types of shells. For instance, destroying a building then engaging anyone fleeing the area with the next round. The rate of fire in the proposed system would have enabled more rounds sent downrange in a given amount of time, allowing more firepower per system than available with the current M109 system. Another capability offered by the NLOS cannon was the Multiple Rounds Simultaneous Impact Mission or MRSI. A MRSI mission is where the cannon fires several rounds at different trajectories allowing the rounds to impact on the same target at the same time, resulting in little or no reaction time for the enemy to adjust its position. This was accomplished by including the autoloader from the cancelled Crusader project which achieved the goals of a much improved fire rate with a reduction in required crew. The proposed system was envisioned as part of a fast mobile force network via improved communications and data capabilities to allow rapid response with enhanced accuracy with the view to reducing friendly fire incidents so long with lessened collateral damage while providing superior protective artillery fire to units requiring gunfire support. Navigation of the vehicle and targeting information were provided via GPS and networked information systems. Improvements in the refueling arrangements and automation of ammunition reloading allowed reduced
reduced downtime for logistic functions that would, otherwise have left the system unavailable for combat support operations. This also allowed the system to use a crew of two instead of five. This was desirable, as staffing continues to be a major contributor to life cycle cost of any combat system. The main chassis of the NLOSC was based on the manned ground vehicle platform being developed for all manned ground platforms under the future combat systems program, giving the NLOSC a high commonality with other MGV base platforms, especially the NLOSM. Use of a common chassis was to reduce the need for specialized training of personnel and allow for faster fielding of repairs. The MGV platform utilized a hybrid diesel-electric propulsion system. The MGV also employed numerous weight-saving features, including composite armor, composite and titanium structural elements, and continuous band tracks. U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe and Chief of Staff of the Army Gen. George W. Casey, Jr., traveled to BAE Systems in Minneapolis, Minnesota in late May 2008 for the rollout of the first non-line-of-sight cannon prototype. Prototype 1 made its first public appearance on the National Mall in Washington on June 11, 2008. A total of eight prototypes were delivered to the U.S. Army Yuma Proving Ground, Arizona, by 2009. The program was officially cancelled in 2009, along with the rest of FCS, non-line of sight mortar. The XM1204 non-line of sight mortar was a turreted, self-propelled mortar a vehicle with a four-person crew. It was capable of firing at targets outside of the crew's line of sight. The NLOSM had a breech-loaded mortar that fired 120mm mortar munitions in including the precision-guided mortar munition. It had a fully automated firing control system and a manually assisted, semi-automated ammunition loading system. It uses a crew of three. The NLOSM provides fires on demand to engage complex and simultaneous target sets. As part of an NLOSM battery, individual NLOSM vehicles will provide precision-guided rounds to destroy high-value targets, protective fires to suppress and obscure the enemy, and illumination fires. All of these will be in close support of infantry maneuver units. The FCS Command, Control, Communications, Computers, Intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance Network enables the NLOSM fire control system to conduct semi-2 autonomous computation of technical fire, direction, automatic gunlet preparation of the ammunition for firing, and mortar round firing. In January 2000, 2003 United Defense, now part of BAE Systems, was selected by the Army and the FCS Lead Systems Integrators to develop and build the NLOSM Recovery and Maintenance Vehicle. The XM1205 Field Recovery and Maintenance Vehicle was the recovery and maintenance system for employment within both the unit of action and unit of employment and contributes to sustaining and generating combat power to the future force structure. Each UA will have a small number of two to three man combat repair teams within the organic forward support battalion to perform field maintenance requirements beyond the capabilities of the crew chief crew, more in-depth battle damage assessment repair and limited recovery operations. The recovery vehicle is designed to hold a crew of three with additional space for three additional recovered crew. The FRMV has a close combat support weapon and a 40mm MK19 grenade launcher. Infantry carrier vehicle The XM1206 Infantry carrier vehicle was a set of similar vehicles for transporting and supporting ground troops. The ICV featured a crew of two and space for nine passengers. 
It is armed with a 30mm Mk44 cannon and a 7.62mm machine gun. The Mk44 provided more firepower but weighed 25% less than the M242 Bushmaster it would replace. The ICV consists of four platform versions, a company commander, a platoon leader, a rifle squad, and a weapon squad. All four platform versions have similar exteriors to prevent targeting of a specific ICV versions. The rifle squad ICV and weapon squad ICV each deliver nine-person infantry squads to a close battle and support the squad by providing offensive and defensive fire. While carrying the majority of the soldier's equipment, the ICV can move, shoot, communicate, detect threats, and protect crew and critical components under all climatic conditions, day and night. The squad would have access to army and joint fire delivery systems from external sources to enhance the squad's range, precision, or quantity of fire. Networking with other components of the unit of action permits rapid identification of targets and improves situational awareness. Medical Vehicle The XM1207 Medical Vehicle was designed to provide advanced trauma life support within one hour to critically injured soldiers. The Medical Vehicle serves as the primary medical system within the unit of action and will have two mission modules, evacuation and treatment. The time-sensitive nature of treatment Treating critically injured soldiers requires an immediately responsive force health protection system with an expedient field evacuation system. The XM1207 FCS Medical Vehicle Evacuation Vehicle allows trauma specialists maneuvering with combat forces to be closer to the casualties point of injury and is used for casualty evacuation. The XM1208 Medical Vehicle Treatment Vehicle enhances the ability to provide advanced trauma management, advanced trauma life support treatments, and procedures forward for more rapid casualty interventions and clearance of the battle space. Both FCS Medical Vehicle Mission Modules will be capable of conducting medical procedures and treatments using installed network telemedicine interfaces, medical communications for combat casualty care and the theater medical information program. Command and Control Vehicle The XM1209 Command and Control Vehicle was to provide for information management of the integrated network of communications and sensor capability within the unit of action and provide the tools for commanders to synchronize the knowledge of combat power with the human dimension of leadership. It was to be located within the headquarters sections at each echelon of the unit of action down to the company level, and with its integrated command, control, and communications equipment suite was to make command and control on the move possible. The C2 versus were to contain all the interfaces required to enable the commander to leverage the power of the C4 ISR network and provides the means for leaders at all levels to achieve information superiority and situational understanding. In addition, the C2 versus were meant to make possible the establishment, maintenance and distribution of a common operating picture fused from the friendly, enemy, civilian, weather and terrain situations while on the move. A crew was to use its integrated C4 ISR suite to receive, analyze and transmit tactical information via voice, video and data inside and outside the unit of action. The C2V was also planned to employ unmanned systems, such as unmanned aerial vehicles to enhance situational awareness throughout the unit of action.